So the idea of thinking that you're going to attract people by changing what you look like. No, this person, if a person is going to like you, they're going to like you for what you look like. Okay. If they don't like you for what you look like and you go and you put on fake weave hair, guess what? When you take off that hair, if you are in a dying situation, okay, and that person just like your hair, well, that person's going to walk away from you or make, or make you end up dead because that person, because, you know, just make you feel miserable when you're supposed to be feeling loved and cared for. So no, you don't search for love with fakeness. You, you will find love in your true natural self. And this is how I coordinate Taylor Against Colorism know about people who are racist. Because if a person uh, find fault in you because of your uh, features, for example, because they don't like you because of your features, and then they go and they find themselves some kind of Spanish woman like Ayamara, and then they start saying, oh, look how beautiful she is, look at how blah, 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 blah. You know it has nothing to, oh, look at how good, how pious, how much of a Christian good person she is. It's not true. It's not because that person is better than you. It's because the person who is praising them is a racist. And you will only know that, okay, by being honest with yourself. And then at least if you are always honest with yourself, you won't feel bad about, oh my God, I just destroyed my hair because of this person or whatnot. But anyway about the idea of making people like you by changing your personality that's bs i'm sorry it's a natural thing for people to like you it's very very natural for people to like people you i mean it's natural for people in this world to always find somebody to like them but then again you think of some people who go and commit suicide because at some phase in their lives okay they may have felt like you know nobody was there for them and they felt completely alone, completely alone. Okay, we do go through those times in life, but you should, and people always tell you not to compare. You need reference points to understand where you stand at and to understand why, okay? If you're gonna compare, if I, for example, compare myself with a Dominican woman, all right, since Haitian men would probably do that, then I would understand the why they would put a Dominican woman on a pedestal because obviously the Dominican woman's skin color is lighter, her hair is softer, etc. So therefore that Dominican woman will be better than me. Okay, be, not because she, and then not only will she be better than me because of the way she looks for in their eyes, she looks better than me, but also what happens is they're gonna give her the support she needs to enhance, whereas I will have to work on my own. And this is why I came, I wanted to do a Creole emission, you know, for those women who are in these situations where they are put down because of their features and then people try to make them change, all right? And I see this happening, especially to young women who don't know better, you know, and they think it's gonna work. It's not gonna work. By the, very likely these people will probably turn you into single mothers, okay, for the moment that you have on the weaving. As soon as they realize that they can't stand your natural hair, they're gonna leave you for some Spanish or white woman. It's just that simple. And you become a single mother. This is how many black people, women become single parents, okay? Because the black men never like them. Look at Kobe Bryant. You see, I saw the guy's death and I'm like, okay, very sad. Oh well, what can I do? I cannot cry. Why am I gonna cry put that guy's picture on my on my Facebook or whatnot? That guy did not like people like me. That guy liked white women, his Spanish women. Okay, that was his choice of people. He did he was not for us. So I don't understand why these black women are like are putting this man as if he was God, this Kobe Bryant guy. Okay? So, so be it. You cannot like, you know, mourn for these people. These are not your kind of people. These are people, if they were, if they were white doing uh, Adolf Hitler with blue eyes and they were living in Germany, these are people who would have killed you. Okay, because just because they're black doesn't mean that they couldn't be Nazis. I have seen black Ku Klux Klan people before and they're married to white women, okay? So, don't change to try to make people like you. It, you know, that's not going to happen, okay? Just stay, be the way you are, be who you are, and someday you're going to wake up proud. And why again? So that you can also be able to build yourself, okay? Because for me, I'm going to tell you something. 
as a natural woman, I have been able to build myself over the past couple, uh, decade or so, okay? I have been able to build myself when I took the defiance to walk away from everybody who was trying to force me to comply to their racist system. So I was able to be myself completely, completely, all right? And consequently, I was able to build myself. When they used to perm my hair somewhere in teenage years, and then they sort of got me to doing it in, um, in, in my college years. So when they were even braiding, they got me to really braiding my hair in college years. It didn't feel natural. In college years, it was like my, like, not only did it feel natural, but I wasn't excelling in school as much as I do with my natural hair. If I saw, you remember that they say hair is your power, and it appears that some people might be jealous of your intelligence as black, dark-skinned women, because they might, either they might be dark people like you who like, you know, why does a fellow dark-skinned woman person have to be smart like me because they think they're the only dark-skinned smart person, or they might be light-skinned people who don't like you and they don't fit, think that you should be somewhere because you're dark-skinned, you're supposed to be their slaves, you're supposed to be their chauffeur or their maid in their house for their wives to boss you around and to put you down okay so these people are gonna attack your hair when you see people attacking your hair as a black woman they're taking your strength and their, your true beauty your internal beauty do not let people attack your hair your hair has a lot of strength in it natural so then they make you think that it has a problem it doesn't look good I don't care if they don't like it too bad all right in the past when I started wearing my hair naturally I used to think, okay, I can't get a job. Uh, well, I didn't. I did get a job, but um, I used to think that I wouldn't be able to get a job if, if um, people misjudge me. I mean, my first job, I wore my, I had my hair natural. I was a teenager. I had my hair natural, and my parents thought it was going to be a problem. It was no problem. So one of the things that I thought is, okay, um, since I was feeling like you know there might be a little bit of racism and things like that, I said, okay, there's this. Uh, Bible verse that says don't offend your neighbor so I'm like okay so my hair my natural hair is offending my neighbor so in order to prevent my natural hair from offending my neighbor okay I wore a wig so I wore this little wig that had that had a comb in it that you could push it back and then the rest of it looked like a white woman's hair or something you know that's it I want a wig not to offend my neighbor. And as soon as I felt strong enough, because usually when we when we wear fake hair as black women, it's because we have lost our strength in self. All right? It, we have lost our strength in self, and we are. it's almost like somebody telling you, hey, take cocaine. And you're like, fine, because it's going to make me feel better. No. Wearing your hair natural is your natural way that God made you. White women don't have to perm their hair for them to be accepted in society. So why should you have to alter your hair to be accepted in society? You know, this is what I'm just saying. So be yourself, and when you are yourself, you will grow best. You grow best because, and you continue to fight, and you and all of the haters of you as an individual, as a black woman, will show themselves. But when you are wearing fake, they sometimes are fake liking you, you know, just for the sake. But you know, a lot of times too, one of the things, when people don't like you, they're never gonna like your hair. Like your hair is your point as a black woman, as a true black woman, I'm not talking about those mixed women, a true black woman, your hair is your evidence of racism. Because say they ask you to braid it today, you braid it and after a while, oh, I'm tired of this style. So then you change it. After a while, oh look, she's wearing weave. After a while, you put it short. Oh gosh, your hair needs a haircut, you know? I'm telling you, you need to learn to love your hair above all. Skin is another issue, but you know, at least I don't see people bleaching their skin here in the United States as much as they are in Africa. So I'm not preaching the skin part that much. In Haiti, Africa, I see a lot of skin bleaching, but here in the US, it looks like black women are trying to be black, okay? Except for the hair, the hair is still a problem. So I gotta preach the hair. Um, so where was I? The point was, guys, don't forget your past, okay? Because my past happens to be harms that were done to me because of my traits. 
that I will not change or that I may have been cajoled to change, okay? That was the only reason why uh, my past. But when somebody tells me, oh, forget it, this is just the past. No, if you forget it, they're gonna come back and they're gonna do it again. And not only that, I remember when they used to do these things like over and over and over to me and I didn't have anybody to talk to and I didn't even have faith. I was too shy to come on Facebook or on YouTube to post things. I was afraid of social media because I was a teacher and God knows, you know, you can't talk, right? So with, guess what they kept on doing? They kept on changing their stories so that they can keep harming me kept on changing their stories over and over again, keep harming me, lies after over, lies over, lies over, lies, so that they, and they kept on hiding the lies over the piles of lies, okay? So then, of course, what I ended up having to do for myself, you know, as they were hiding the lies for them and for the social image that they were destroying me with for people, women who were light-skinned, okay, so what I ended up having to do for myself was, I finally was able to break through by posting the pictures of the evidences on Facebook. So I post, I created fake accounts with the names of my, they're my family, so I, re, I created fake accounts with their names as the people went through them. So, and I started posting the evidence. I started posting the evidence and tell, I'm telling you, I started becoming free, becoming free. And now they're like, oh, you gotta forget this. If I forget this, you know what they're gonna do? They're, making you forget it so you can empower racism so you can empower the colorism so they can do they can they have finished destroying me so now they could destroy my younger sisters they can destroy their uh children coming in the future all right they can destroy the dark-skinned girls of haiti or from haiti of haiti not from but of haiti because they were born here they can destroy their lives they can destroy their self-esteem they can destroy the race that's how they destroy us, by making us forget. You never forget. And this is why African Americans are going back to Africa, because African Americans never forgot. So why are we gonna forget? Okay, maybe this is why Haiti is being destroyed, because Haiti, obviously, the Haitians are forcing each other to forget harms done, to forget acts of racism. Guys, when somebody comes and tells you to forget your past, remember that your today, is because of your past. The reason why I'm a teacher today is because I took four years and went to college. If I did not go to college, I, would, I couldn't be a teacher. The reason why I'm a medical technologist today is because I realized how much harm they were doing to teachers here in the US. Okay, and how much di how difficult it was because I didn't want to be a teacher forever. I wanted to be something else. But how difficult it was to even move around. Okay, because of my that's my past. I discovered that, and then I decided to take the path of going back to a specific school to be able to become a medical technologist. And that's why I'm able to get the job in the VA. That's how I'm able to. Um, you see, you have to have the past in order to build your your freedom for today. So if you let go of the past, you will never find your way. You might by accident, but sometimes that accident is too, too is not that great. I see too many young black people dying, too many young black people getting shot, too many young black people becoming single uh, mothers, women, black women, too many young black people living on the streets becoming drug addicts because they were being forced, even by their own blacks, to forget, okay? And sometimes when we hear the black African Americans or black Americans keep telling their story over and over again, and some people get tired. You know, if I mean, the state of Florida and I think many other states, they got tired of hearing the African American story that they are forcing African Americans to forget the harms that were done to them, all right? To, it's bad enough that they're destroying the black American family, but they're forget, forcing them to forget the harms, okay? That they're tired of hearing these stories. They're tired of the grudge being held. But until you completely stop oppressing a people, how could you expect the person to forget? Unless, because those who are forcing you to forget when you are not ready to forget, want to harm you. Because when you are healed, you can forget. 
that's when you are healed. But you can't forget because guess when the enemy comes back to attack? When you are healed because they're like, you're not supposed to be well. So guys, never forget your past. Never forget the lessons learned in life. Okay, be they good or bad. Be they so you can become a surgeon who will be able to remember the procedures and not operating table to save a life so you don't kill a life because you forgot. Or be they because you were harmed in the past. Maybe because it was because of your skin color. Maybe because it was because of your racial hair inheritance. Okay, for which they had harmed you. Okay, or whatever other reason that was unjust unjust that they chose to harm you you see me i told you i had no friends so when somebody has no friends and don't go out looking for friends don't go out clubbing don't come and harm them all right don't wake a sleeping lion they say don't come and harm them because if you come to harm them it is their right to remember it is their right to bring back the past because if somebody is bringing back back the past it is because they are finding their own way to freeing themselves from your hate and from the harms you've done them that had never been rectified. You see, Haitians don't say sorry when, well, who's, well, not racist.